DC's Black Adam just dropped in theaters. Let's talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, and my non-binary friends, welcome to Let's Talk About It, a series where I'm gonna pick some nerdy stuff that I enjoyed, and we're gonna talk about it. Today's edition is Black Adam. We're gonna focus on the characters though. The movie itself was amazing, the plot was okay, but the characters were by far the best part of it. Let's get into it. Hey y'all, real quick, I'm recording this after I'm done with my recording. I forgot to put spoiler alert. If you do not want anything spoiled about the movie before you go see it for yourself, which I highly recommend you go see the movie, do not watch this video. Come back later. This is a spoiler alert, so don't, don't, don't come at me later. I'm letting you know. We're gonna start off with The Rock, I mean, <clears throat> sorry, Black Adam. Now for a quick description of Black Adam, he has the same powers of Shazam. He and Shazam got their powers from the same source and their powers are basically that they're super strong, they can fly, they have, uh, they're supposed to have a lot of wisdom, they're invincible, they're super fast, and they can manipulate lightning. The difference is, Black Adam was ruled to be unworthy to have his powers by the Council of Wizards because of his actions. The wizard was unable to completely take away his powers, so instead he banished Black Adam, only for him to be revived by somebody else like in the movie. Here is my honest opinion about Black Adam, the character. I thought it was great, but... <laughs> He, honestly, he was great. I think The Rock did a really good job, but I couldn't help seeing that it was The Rock playing Black Adam. Really, it almost felt like The Rock dressed as Black Adam fighting a bunch of people. Now, don't get me wrong. Those action scenes were dope. I kept looking at my buddy every time somebody was getting roasted by lightning. It was incredible. But I just couldn't get over the fact that he didn't have the accent, he didn't even have like the pointed ears. I could get away with him not having the hair, it is what it is, but it, it just felt like I was watching The Rock play The Rock, but that's also kind of what The Rock does. No no shade, please don't, please don't hurt me. That all being said, I really don't think it took away from the movie, and I'm actually excited to see him further in the DC universe. Like I said, the action scenes he was in was, were great. I love the fact that the movie focused on his character. Like, he's not a hero. He's a champion of his country. Meaning that if you mess with Kondok, you're going to mess with Black Adam. And he will kill you to get the job done. So don't mess around. Now, getting into what was honestly my favorite part, the Justice Society of America, aka the JSA. So the JSA for this movie consists of Hawkman, Dr. Fate, Cyclone, and Adam Smasher. One of the coolest things to me was the contrast between the two younger heroes, who were Cyclone and Adam Smasher, versus the two more veteran been in the game heroes, Hawkman and Dr. Fate. I think both of the older heroes had a more mentor role for our two younger heroes, and their chemistry with just all four of them was fantastic. Like there was there was a few times where Adam Smasher like messed up, like he accidentally hit Hawkman, and as Hawkman is like picking himself off of the ground, he looks at him, he just goes, "Me and you, when we get back to the ship, me and you, and if you have a black father." You felt that in your bones. <laughs> like I said, the JSA as a team were dope. Let's look at them individually. Let's start with Cyclone. Cyclone is the granddaughter of the original Red Tornado, who up until this point I thought was the Red Tornado from Young Justice, but it's actually uh, this lady named Ma Hunkle. That's pretty cool. Cyclone was easily one of my favorite characters in the movie. Her powers were dope and her scenes were amazing. So essentially she controls wind. She can manipulate wind kind of in the same way that Black Adam can manipulate lightning. She said that some crazy professor had kidnapped her and injected her with nano machines, and that's how she got her abilities. Now, they didn't say exactly who this crazy professor was, but after doing a little bit of digging, I found out it was Tio Maro, the same guy who creates the robot Red Tornado. Having Tio Maro confirmed to be in this universe kind of gives me hope that we're gonna have a Red Tornado adaptation on the big screen, which would be dope. Cyclone was amazing, and the character that she played off very well was Adam Smasher. Something dope about Adam Smasher is that he's actually the second one. His uncle, Al Pratt, who was also the first Adam Smasher in the comics, was the original Adam Smasher in this universe. It also appears that his uncle was a part of the JSA back in his heyday, which is really cool to think about. Now, Adam Smasher's ability is to grow big. Think like Ant-Man, but he only gets big. But 
he also increases in density so he's got a little bit of invincibility to go with that as well now Adam Smasher was kind of the comic relief for the group always making jokes making things more a little bit more lighthearted. I really enjoyed that and I love to see the little uh, nod to his relationship with Black Adam in the comics near the end of the movie. Something I found when I was looking up all these characters is that he and Black Adam actually had a pretty good relationship with one another. When Black Adam's wife had died in the comics, Adam Smasher was the only person to try to console him. And when Black Adam lost his powers and he was about to die, Adam Smasher was the only person who saved him. Alright, so that was the new blood. Let's get into the old blood. Starting with Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate, aka Kent Nelson, gets his powers from the Helm of the Fate. When he puts it on, he basically becomes possessed by the spirit of Naboo. Naboo is a part of a coalition of other powerful spirits known as the Lords of Order. Just as her name says, they try to keep the balance with the Lords of Chaos. Anyone who wears the Helm of the Fate becomes Dr. Fate, and in essence, they become kind of possessed by Naboo. Nabu is actually super powerful, so it's kind of hard to make a list of his powers. So we're just going to call it magic and leave that as it is. So basically, Hawkman is an Asian Egyptian prince who, along with the love of his life, were killed by a jealous priest. Now somehow, because comic books, the knife, I guess, was special that killed both uh, the prince and, or, you know, Hawkman and his lover, who, by the way, is Hawk Girl. So they're able to reincarnate over time. Hawkman's abilities include flight, strength, and use of int metal. Now, Hawkman to me worked as a perfect foil to Black Adam in the way that Black Adam, you know, was, was serious about killing people to get done what he needs to get done. And Hawkman was on the opposite side saying, you can't kill people. That's not what heroes do. And it created this question of, okay, what is a hero? Which kind of got answered because Black Adam was a hero to his people. And that's all he needed to be a hero too. Now there are two more characters that I want to talk about. Let's start off with Amanda Waller. For anybody who might have forgotten, and I can understand why, Amanda Waller is one who runs Tax Force X, aka the Suicide Squad. That's the group of supervillains where she puts a bomb in the back of their heads and sends them out on dangerous missions. And if they succeed, they get time off their sentence. If they don't succeed, they get blown up or killed by whoever they're fighting. Something that was really interesting to me was that Amanda Waller was the one to contact Carter Hall, aka Hawkman, and let him know about the threat of Black Adam. This was really interesting to me because from what we saw or what we've seen in the DC universe so far, as scrambled as it is, it seemed like the Justice League was really the first time we really saw like superhumans, namely with like Superman. That's why everybody was so afraid of him in Man of Steel. But that doesn't seem to be the case since it looks like the JSA has been around for however long long enough for them to have had members come and go and long enough for Amanda Waller to have known about them and just be have a direct line to them so it just makes me personally curious how long have the JSA been around and who else has been in it now moving on from Amanda Waller we're gonna go ahead and talk about the last character from the movie Superman Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have Superman, played by the incredible Henry Cavill. This scene got me hyped when he came onto the screen, even though the internet ruined it for me. Twitter. <laughs> Basically, there is a mid credit scene where Amanda Waller appears to Black Adam via a drone, and she's pretty much threatening him. She pretty much tells him, all right, you've shown that you're really strong and you're going to be a pain in the ass to try to capture. So I'm going to make you a deal. You stay in Condock. But if you step one foot out of there, you got to deal with us. To which Black Adam says, there's no one more powerful than me on this planet. Then Amanda Waller says, well, I'll just have to get somebody who's not from this planet. Black Adam then destroys the drone and in flies Superman, who simply says, we should talk. I'm super excited for this. His Superman suit looked amazing, and I'm very happy for him to get another shot at playing Superman. I think he did a great job, even with a not so great script. Three times. 
my overall opinion on the movie i think you guys should go see it i think it's one of the best dc things they put out recently i still say batman is pretty much here for me but i'm also a batman fan so you know but seriously the movie was great it was fun the characters were amazing the chemistry felt real amongst all of them and it low-key has me excited for what's going to happen with dc if they're going in this new direction i'm gonna keep it a buck though try not to be too excited because i've been burned before twice but guys that's gonna wrap up this episode of let's talk about it the next one i'm planning on doing is for the first two episodes of bleach and in the first episode of chainsaw man i'm currently reading that manga it is amazing you should read it if you if you can it is so good but if you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below if you're either gonna go see black adam or if you saw it and let me know your thoughts all that being said stay safe stay blessed and i'll talk to you guys later